Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome to 3303. This is where I talk about the news and happenings in and around Elite Dangerous. Today we take a look at Frontier's year-end financial report. Frontier have a number of other games on the way. PC Gamer take a look at the amount of galaxy that's so far been explored. And Draven Darken makes a return. Toward the end of last week, Frontier released their year-end financial report. Now, being a publicly traded company, this means that they are legally required to release this information and it's for public consumption, so you can see all the details yourself. There's a link below for you to go and check it out. Now, personally, I think this information is well worth having a look at because, of course, it does affect the future of Elite Dangerous. Some people are wondering as to how long the game may be supported or, indeed, if Frontier might be struggling financially. So, these details help allay any of those fears. The revenue for 12 month period up until the 31st of May 2017 is at 37.4 million pounds and that's up from the financial year in 2016 where it stood at 21.4 million so quite an increase there. The operating profit is at 7.8 million for this year and that compares to just 1.2 million for last year so this represents an increase of 550% on their operating profit. The net cash balance stands at £12.6 million, and again compared to last year where it stood at £8.6 million, so again a nice increase. Now as these figures all represent the information available up to the 31st of May, they do not include the £17 million investment from Tencent which took place in July of this year. So all in all, Frontier in a very good place financially, and if you do happen to take a look at their share prices, they're now standing at very close to £13 per share. And this value puts Frontier at a total market capitalization of £475 million, so yeah, very close to a half a billion. And this is up significantly from just a few weeks ago, where it stood at £330 million. Frontier then seemed to be doing very, very well financially, and I don't think we've got any concerns, at least in financial terms, with their commitment to Elite Dangerous. In terms of what that means for content, we're going to have to wait and see until the 7th of October at the Frontier Expo, but that really isn't that long away now. Financials are not the only thing Frontier discussed in their end of year report. They briefly mentioned the fact that they're in the early planning stages for their next two franchise games. And these are two games in addition to the already announced Jurassic World Evolution. They were keen to announce that just because Jurassic World is a licensed product, it doesn't necessarily follow that their additional two games will also be licensed products. But the new games are likely to be a long-term supported games as Frontier's business model is very much games as a service. They also mentioned that they will be ramping up their production schedule so they can release one game per year, rather than the current cycle of one game every two years. PC Gamer have published a recent article on Elite Dangerous discussing the size of the Milky Way galaxy, along with the quantity of the area that has currently been explored by players. Now as we know, the game has 400 billion star systems, and according to PC Gamer, who have based their figures on the website EDSM, the current amount explored stands at 0.003941%. And now, of course, this figure only includes information from people who actually have the EDSM software installed on their system. And that won't include probably the majority of PC players, and it certainly won't include any of the console players. Now, because of that, PC Gamer did suggest that you could probably double this figure, but I think they're being extremely generous there, and I'd been inclined to multiply those figures by a factor of 10 at the absolute minimum. But even if we were to do that, then it means the figure still stands significantly lower than a one-tenth of a percent. So yes, that means there's a whole ton of the galaxy out there still to be discovered. It also means that at the current rate of exploration, players are going to take many hundreds of years to uncover the entire galaxy. Now when I've mentioned this before, people have said that, well, they don't really believe it because wherever they go, they find systems that are already discovered. But this is very simply down to the way in which they explore. If you think about it, if you're starting in a popular system, let's talk of Sold maybe, or even LHS 3447, which is a starter system, and then plot a course towards Bernard's Loop, for example, or even the Maya system, then that is the same course that many thousands of people would have plotted before you. In fact, if you start at a popular destination like that and plot a course at 1,000 light years in nearly any direction, it's extremely likely that you're going to have plot a course that other people will have also have done. So if you truly want to go somewhere that no one has been before, then from whatever system you're currently in, plot a course upwards by a few hundred light years 
or downwards by a few hundred light years. And when you reach that destination, then you can plot a course of 1000 light years in any direction. And this simple technique greatly increases your opportunities of finding systems that have not already been discovered. But if this is not enough for you, then simply head towards the galactic core where there are hundreds of millions of systems because they're all so densely compressed and there you will find the vast majority have not seen a living soul. On the 9th of September, a number of commanders got together from the East India Company, along with Radio Sidewinder, Diamond Frogs, Galcop and Simpad, and they presented Elite Aid, a live stream aimed at generating funds for assisting the people in Texas. Now they started out with a target of $1,000, but reached a massive $3,090. So congratulations to everyone involved, and if you want to take a look at this, then do have a look at the Just Giving website. You can find a link in the video description below. For those of you who have been following Elite Dangerous for a while now and checking out things on YouTube, you'll no doubt remember the great series called Draven Darken. Well, it now makes its return with episode 7 and is up to its usual fantastic quality. Now, these episodes are weigh in a little longer than what you're probably used to when it comes to many Elite Dangerous videos. Episode 7 is 32 minutes, but those are certainly 32 minutes that are well spent. Now, if you want to check out the video, indeed, if you want to check out the entire series, then do take a look at the video description below where you can find a link. For anyone who's been waiting for more information on patch 2.4, the return, we should be getting some of our questions answered at least on the upcoming live stream scheduled for the Thursday at the 14th of September at 7pm BST. Now, primarily, this is apparently going to be a lore focused live stream, but it will also include some details on all how the update is going to roll out along with the release date. So do keep an eye out for that on Frontier's YouTube channel if you care to take a look. That then brings us to an end of this episode of 3303. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.